there is a Pokemon regional tournament coming up. Uh, it's about two hours from my house in about two weeks, two and a half weeks. And uh, I'm planning on playing Rainbow Road there, this deck that we are streaming with now. I've been having a lot of fun with it. It's like super consistent and takes for a lot of damage very early. Uh, I think we should always go first. Rename the deck to Bag of Skittles. That's a lot less descriptive. Yeah, yeah, I'm in I'm in Central Illinois. The real colonel. So that is that is fairly close to me. So what do I do it here? Uh, probably starting an Ultra Ball to get a feel for what's in my deck. This Execute is excellent with these two Ultra Balls because we can bring this back to our hand over and over again. So we've got three Ho-Ohs. We've got a Hoopa. We're probably getting a Hoopa here, right? This feels like a, we're getting a Hoopa here. And DDE. Yep. So what is prized? Skyfield's prized, Averse Seeker's prized, uh, an Energy Switch is prized, Keldeo is prized, uh, Salamance is prized. I'm gonna grab Hoopa here. Uh, one of our Zaranesses is prized. Why not get Ho-Oh? Because Hoopa can get two Ho-Ohs, Ryan. I'm going to go ahead and trainer mail before I decide what I want to get with this, because if this finds... All right, another Ultra Ball is actually, actually decent here. So, let's go ahead and... I'm going to go ahead and get Hoopa, and then Hoopa's going to go get Ho-Oh-Ho-Oh Shaman. Oh, I guess I don't have a supporter yet, so we'll get Ho-Oh-Ho-Oh Jirachi. And then... I'm going to go ahead and return this Execute from my discard pile to my hand. And we're going to go ahead and Ultra Ball. We'll Ultra Ball discarding Ho-Oh and Execute. And we'll get a second Zaranas. And I don't actually think I want this break. So I'm actually going to Ultra Ball and discard these two so I get my hand empty here. And I'm going to go ahead and grab a Shaman out of my deck. Then... I'm going to go ahead and put Fighting Fury Belt on here. And I think I Shaman before I Jirachi. See what we find. It's possible I didn't want Shaman here and I just wanted to, like, get Jirachi. Alright, so there's a Battle Compressor. So let's go ahead and Compressor, get the last Ho out of our deck. Along with a Fairy and a Lightning Energy here. So now we can flip a coin on this. And if one of these hits heads like the first one does here, we can go ahead and grab a bunch of energies with it. Then I can put the double colorless on here. Two, three, four, five, six. Uh, my opponent has seven cards in their hand because we did mulligan this game. So I'm going to switch. So like, this is a good example of why like, sometimes I think you want to draw with this deck. I'm going to go ahead and Jirachi and grab an N here. I think there was an N in my deck. Yeah, so I wasn't couldn't remember if it was priced or not. So I'm going to grab the N. And then we'll go ahead and N because it puts our opponent down a card. Who knows how good or bad their hand is, but this puts them down a card. Oh, you know what? I probably should have loaded up the active one because I don't have a... Yeah, this was a mistake on my part. I don't have a... Uh, I don't actually have a, uh, a Keldeo active. I'm just so used to having Keldeo active that we can, like, switch back and forth at will. And I probably, probably should have, should have pumped up the active one. Oh, you know what? My opponent could be playing a Plume deck. Maybe I should have played the Verse Seeker up proactively. Nah, Plume's not too popular and expanded, so...
That's a hell of a first turn. This deck, this deck sets up really consistently on the first turn of the game. Like, like our first turn, if we would have been on the draw, would have been attacking for 160 on this first turn. 170 with the Fighting Fury belt. More poison counter, sure. So we do have this DDE that we can like DDE this and then retreat it. That doesn't feel good, but our dry geo body scheme that card seems real loose. Am I paralyzed? All right. Well, I actually can't do much here. Um, I think I'm putting DDE out here and then coalescing. Shuffle our hand back into our deck, draw eight. DCE, you're right. We're using to play, play in the dragon deck. Yep, yep, you're exactly correct. DDE is double dragon energy. DCE is double colorless energy. Uh, yeah, we can't do anything because this is paralyzed regardless. So just going to pass the turn. Normally, if we had Keldeo, we could rush in and then Flowstone back, but this thing poisons us, right? During your turn before you attack me, use this ability. Oh, you know what? I probably should have gotten Skyfield here just because, um, just to, like, knock this Viridian Banks City Gem out. So this is a Sceptile deck, because the Unseen Claw does 130 if they're affected by a special condition. And these things put special conditions on us. If this String Shot works again, we might be in trouble. If the String Shot doesn't work, we should be able to uh, get something going and knock this out, I believe. Super scoop up, sure. So shaman, yep. You probably won't see me playing road in standard anymore, Walla, for reference. I really don't like the deck in that format. So, what are we doing here? Um, almost certainly trainer mailing, right? Let's lead on this, see what we get. Skybench would be awesome. That's not a skybench. Uh, yeah, just not taking any of those, I don't think. We're going to put an energy on here. And then with a good verse seeker, with a good Coralus here, we could knock this Sceptile out this turn. Maybe I'm supposed to burn the energy switch just so like it's not in my deck to draw. Holy crap, are there not Skyfields in- are all my Skyfields priced? Oh god, thank god, there's one. So Skyfield, that should mean we should be able to knock them out here. So, Skyfield says we can put more- more Pokemon on our benches, both of us can. And, what that means is... I get to put more types of Pokemon. They're just conceding, so we're gonna knock out their subtile, and they're mostly gonna be behind. So we can go wider, and then like, get 200 plus damage with our Xeranus here. Everyone's having a wonderful Wednesday, hanging out, battling some Pokemon TCG. Never not heads. Little owl coin, don't fail me now. 
Alcun. Yeah, Tommy Gather. Uh, the the two hundred something reward was the dark ray too. You get two dark rays on the ladder this season. It's really great. The rewards in this game are phenomenal. Lead on Zaraness. This hand is poop soup. Don't do nothing. Would like to draw an Ultra Ball or a Sycamore or an N. Even a Coralist probably isn't good enough right now. Looking for some redraws, redraws, redraws. Found me a redraw. Dun, 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 dun. They're on Dark Ray. I'm going to go put the Fury Belt on Masalamance because Salamance is probably going to be good against the Dark deck. Alrighty, and look at that. This hand does stuff and things, and I'm so, so excited. Boo -doo 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 -doo. Get to figure out which Pokemon are in our deck. So there's a Keldeo. So this Hoopa is getting Keldeo, Jolteon, and I'm binning two Ho-Ohs here, and a, a Fairy Energy? What's in my prizes? A Sycamore is in my prizes. Uh, my Lysander's in my hand. There's two Ultra Balls in my prizes. Uh, there's two trainer mails in my prizes. Okay, that's not too bad. Let's go ahead and bid, ditch these guys. Let's go ahead and do this. Search for some EXs here. Uh, get Keldeo, Shaman, and Jolteon. Get some stuff going here. The reason why Magic players say that Pokemon decks feel like Storm decks is because in Storm decks you get to make a lot of little decisions, and in Magic in general you don't make a lot of little decisions. A lot of Magic decks are fairly linear in the way they play out games. They're just like, oh, I go here, I get this thing, I like, it's turn two, so I play my two drop because that's what you do on turn two. I filled my bench so I can't ho-ho anything back. That might have been a mistake. Yeah, mistakes were made. Uh, let's go ahead and rush in Keldeo here, and we're going to switch him back for Hoopa, just in case our opponent can attack on this first turn of the game. I'd say Trev is quite the matchup against Rainbow Road. Yeah, the Trev matchup's not good for Road, but Trev didn't really put up any results against the... Uh, didn't put up any results at the last expanded regional that I was looking And that's one of the reasons why I like the Pokemon TCG so much is just like there's a lot of really small sequencing decisions you're making in a lot of your turns and like you're actually taking a lot of actions in your first few turns of the game and when your turns have a lot of different permutations and ordering that they could go and things you can do and can't do and shouldn't do, it, uh, it uh, makes for more interesting gameplay in my opinion. Alright, so that turns off tools. Sure. Um, yeah, I really don't have a lot going on here. I think I really don't want to end my opponent, but we don't have anything going on, so I think that's ideal. One thing that's worth noting here is I got punished because I can't float stone retreat the Keldeo. Which is definitely something that's worth noting. Um, I'm going to Ultra Ball, ditch this and this. What do I want to get here? Let's grab an extra Xeranus for now. I guess I could technically grab a Shaman. Let's do that. I'm going to go ahead and put this on here for now so I draw an extra card with Shaman. I, I agree, uh, Azantith. I think, I think Pokemon's probably the lowest variance TCG that I've played to date. Which is it's a good thing for someone that wants to play a lot. Let's return this to play with all of these. Even with the coin flip cards, like, they're very minimal coin flip cards like you're actually playing on the regular in your decks. 
Um, I think I'm just putting this on here. And then passing the turn. Yeah. What happens if a bench Pokemon on Skyfield is removed? You discard bench Pokemon until you until you get down to to the limit. So like if they if they bump my Skyfield off to discard some Pokemon to get down to five on my bench, we'll discard these shamans ten out of ten. Izumatoad, your opponent can't play items. Ooh, they've got item lock in their deck too. Okay. Uh, wow, we could realistically get item lock this turn? I was not expecting that. I guess if they item lock me, then they can't... Uh, if I get item lock this turn, they're no longer tool locking me, so I can retreat, which is nice. to draw them a lot of cards. They shuffle their hand back into their deck and then draw cards equal to the amount of Pokemon on both benches. I've got seven of the had four, so they drew 11 cards here. Handy dandy uptime command. Lysander would be a good hit as well here. <laughs> Alright. Uh, I actually, I'm a liar, aren't I? Because the way I spread my energies out. I haven't played my Coralus yet, though. So, I guess I'm going to do that. So, what are we looking for? We're looking for double colorless energy plus two switches. It's not completely unlikely because we get to draw 12 cards. And hey, look at that. We did it again. Double colorless energy plus two switches. So double colorless means I can put this on here. And then two switches means I can go from here to here. And then I can do it again. Compressing some things we don't really want in my deck here. Uh, don't need an Ultra Ball at this point. Um, do I want the Lysander in my bin? Yeah, I kind of do. So I can Verse Seeker back. And let's go ahead and retreat this. Or this guy. And then Rainbow Force. Deal a cool T20 here. Grab a price card. Computer search, not bad. The energies are kind of hard to tag sometimes because they're tiny, if without zooming in. So, this does... Oh, come on, get all the way. Evil Ball does 20 damage times the amount of energy attached to both active Pokemon. So this is sitting for 30, 50, 130 right now. Minus 20 is 110. So double colorless energy and they knock out my Xeranus break. I'm going to draw a couple cards here. So they're going to have three cards left in their deck now. 16, and then they're going to draw 13. So, almost certainly getting a DDE here. 
Oh, jeez. So, yeah. That just locks my bench down now. Um, Shamans, I have to go down to three Pokemon on my bench here. Uh, pretty sure it's going to be one, two, three here. Glad I have this Karen. Oh, they're going to lock me out of playing items now, too. So can't play items. I think I just put this on here, right? And then rush this in. And switch this back. And then just like sit on this Jolteon. Flash races, I don't take any of the basics. They've only got three cards in their deck. They're probably gonna end us at some point here. And, like put some cards back into their deck, but for now we've got this going. Have a good night, Jace. Prevent all damage done to this Pokemon from attacks and basics. And actually, we have the other double colorless and the fire in our hand, so we can set the Salamance up, and like, all their guys are EXs right now, so that's like 320 that this is doing per pop. So we'll put fire on this next turn, and then DDE the following turn, and we can just start mowing their squad down. What you got, what you got, what you got. They got a lot of decisions over there. They've got basically the remainder of their deck in their hands. A lot of different permutations of things they could be going over. I wonder if they're playing escape ropes. If they're not playing escape ropes, they like basically have to have Lysanders here. They're just thinning their thinning their hand basically before they end. I'm assuming they have to end here at some point. Okay, there's a verse seeker, so they're gonna Lysander something. Put my Zarenus back up, I assume. Salamance. Okay. There's a float stone. Sure. A dark patch. Sure. What does this do? Just 30 and 30 to one of my bench guys. I don't I don't understand what we're doing here with our lives. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on here. I really don't want a Karen. I'll put these three back into their deck, and I really don't want them to draw those. I really don't want to put all of my Ho-Ohs and stuff back into my deck. So yeah, we're just going to go ahead and rush this in. And then retreat it back out for Jolteon. How many Lysander or Verse Seekers does he have left? Just one, and it could very well be prized. So, Flash Ray. They could also be playing a second Lysander. Sometimes they do that. Okay, there's the Verse Seeker again. They've only got one card left in their deck, and so I wonder how they're gonna prevent decking here. I feel like this should happen last turn. Yeah, what's the break attack? The break attack does uh, damage times the amount of energies attached to all your Pokemon. I guess the break attack would have actually been okay there, right? Would the, would the break attack have knocked out the Seismitoad? I had three, six, eight. It would, have, would that have done 160? I'm gonna, I'm gonna double check. I don't use that attack very often. I, I think it's all energies, actually. I'm gonna double check. I don't, I don't think it's just fairy energy. I could be wrong, though. It might be. It's tax destroy damage times the amount of energy. No, yeah, it's times the amount of energy attached to all of your Pokemon. So, yeah, the Xeranus break attack would have actually just been lethal that turn that I hit him with the Jolteon again. Like, they're hitting him with the Jolteon is conservative since they're decking out anyways, I think. But, like, definitely a line I hadn't considered. It's all, yeah, it's all energies. That's what I thought. That's fine. It's just, like, usually you're putting, like, Fairy plus DDE, so, like, the break attack isn't an option. But when you're into Parallel City, the break attack is super, super reasonable. Probably better than Rainbow Road a lot of the time, especially in the late game when we built up energies on a lot of our guys. Pokemon and Pokewomen. Sounds good. It's got a Zeranus, it's got a double close energy, it's got Ultra Ball, Sky Field, Sycamore, a lot of lot going on. Do you need help? <gasps> Hi Jacob. 
You pooped. Uh oh. Uh, I don't. It's rude to make him wait. Uh, my, I have to change a diaper really quick. So we're just gonna concede this game right quick. Thank you everyone for hanging out. Don't go anywhere. We're gonna play some more games when I get back in just a second. I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, put the deck up here so you can take a look at my pretty rainbow road. I'll be I'll be right back. Honestly, that's one of the addest bonuses to Pokemon Dark Knight Hex. The cards are just like pieces of art. Like the Ho-Ohs are beautiful. I've got paper Ho-Ohs. I, I own this deck in paper. Uh, stands one card that's still coming in the mail. It should be here before the event next month. Um, but yeah, the cards just, they're so beautiful. And we're on the, gonna be on the draw for a change here. So hopefully, what is the Donk and Idiot deck? Uh, the Donk and Idiot deck is a deck that is capable of killing winning the game on the very first turn while it's on the play maybe maybe we'll close today out with the donkin idiot deck it's it's funny to say the least if uh if you want to see the donkin idiot deck in action guaranteed going off it's not super consistent so um if you want if you want to check that out i've got videos of it going off on my youtube page it's, it's hilarious. Yeah, it's Fortress Donk. My opponent chose to be on the draw. Interesting. My opponent hasn't been turn one trevd enough that they chose to be on the draw. Uh, Alakazam. When you play Adam Alakazam, you may put two damage counters on your opponent's poke. On your opponent's active Pokemon. Three damage on one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. That's really good. How is that possible? Are you do X and win cards in Pokemon? No, there's... Ah, we'll place them with it after this. It's easier to just see it than to try and explain it. Um, let's go ahead and start on an Ultra Ball here. Discarding these two. I'm going to go ahead. Hopefully there's a Hoopa in my deck. Yep, so we got a Hoopa here. So we'll grab, we'll grab Mr. Hoopa out of the deck. I'll go ahead and play Hoopa out here. It's really hilarious when it works. 
and your opponent doesn't concede. And your, your opponent not conceding is a crucial part, because a lot of the times they concede. Uh, yeah, we'll grab these. Opponent's got some EXs and some GXs. Salamance probably not going to be stellar, but let's just, like, get it out of our deck, basically. Let's go ahead and do this, and then go ahead and do this, and then go ahead and Shaman. Do I want to play an Energy before I Shaman? Probably not. All right, we got a float stone for Keldeon here. And then Coralus is actually going to draw us more cards than Enwell since there's seven Pokemon between the two benches. So let's do that. Uh, so we got Skyfield. But we really don't have anything else to do this turn. Uh, I guess I can put the Fairy Energy on here and then... Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and rush in and switch out to the Jolteon here. The Jolteon has a free retreat cost, so in case they blow our tool away, we'll still be fine. Hand was... Hand's medium. Opponent's getting there. Okay, so they've got their Hoopa deck, so Salamance not going to be as bad as I thought it was going to be initially, seeing the Wobbuffet and the Eevee. Yeah, the, the Donkin Idiot deck is basically Legacy Belcher. That's a good way to put it. Legacy, Legacy Belcher is a great way to describe it. What do they put on here? This, this Pokemon is attached to Snacto and is damaged. Put six damage on the. Sure. This is gonna side beam, I assume, here. Really not worried about that. With a good draw next turn, we can knock this guy out. Alright, let's go ahead and Skyfield here. And then. I think I actually want to play this Execute out onto my bench. It lets me draw an extra card here. Because we're going to go ahead and Coralesce. I'm going to Verse Seeker for the Coralesce. And then there's 11 Pokemon between the two benches. So let's do this. Looking for a double colorless energy. There's a double colorless energy. Uh, let's go ahead and put DCE on here. Uh, let's Battle Compressor and see what we can get. Probably just a bunch of Ho-Ohs here. What energy type am I missing in here? So let's put a fire in my bin. So let's do that. Then we can go ahead and flip heads on one of these and put it back into play with three energies attached to it. Darn it! I said we were going to flip heads on one of those. Uh, oh, you know what? I should have gotten a third Ho-Oh because I have an Ultra Ball here. Yeah, I wasn't thinking. So let's ditch this, and I guess I'm holding that at this point. Go get another Xeranus here. Let's have a second one to set up. And then we can retreat our Jolteon here. And then... We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven types of Pokemon on our bench. This will hit for 210. 220, sorry. Which is enough to knock out this GX. We do take 60 damage in return, but I think that's worth it. Hitting another double color synergy here is fantastic. If our opponent's able to knock this off, we like discard, execute, and shaman, and it's like not a big deal. We can get this, uh, this Salamance attacking next turn, most likely, with the energy switch and the DDE. I really kind of feel stupid for having, having missed the fact that I had a fire energy in the hand, and I could have been a third, a third Ho-Oh here. So that was definitely a mistake. Put three damage counters on each of your opponent's Pokemon that has energy attached to it. That's pretty good. Their hand does not seem stellar otherwise. Uh, 
So when we evolve into M. Alakazam, he gets to put 20 on this and 30 on one of my bench. Which knocks out Execute. Okay, that's fair. That ends the turn for him though, right? There's no Spirit Link on here. So this has 210 hit points. So... Yeah. If I hit heads on either of these, this guy gets knocked out. Alright. Sweet. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, yeah. So I'm going to put a D, D, E on here. And then energy switch a fairy from here to here. And then knock your Amalakazam out. Slowly mowing him down here. How much is the Ho-Oh Rebirth worth on TCGO? It's a few dollars. It's like six bucks, I think. With like the real dollar equivalent of what I paid for them. They're not, they're not cheap. This is the second most expensive card on the deck, I believe. Those are actually two great cards. We get to... Or we get to just, sure. Okay, do this and then knock your guy out. Got us working our way towards this dark right here. Slow and steady. I, I really like this Rainbow Road deck. I am excited to play it next month. You dog idiots text both. I, I am not that bold. Uh, this hand is actually very good. Um, it's got Hoopa to get going. It's got a Battle Compressor to get some Ho-Oh's in the bin. It's got a Sycamore and some Fairy Energies and some Energy Switches. This, this link here makes it really pretty easy. So we're playing some kind of water toolbox decks. Gyarados says, flip a coin until you get tails for each head. Search your deck for water energy and attach it to this Pokemon. This does 10 damage to each of your bench Pokemon. That doesn't seem particularly good. There must be a EX, uh, an M Gyarados EX that's pretty good. You need to log into the forms in order to view that link. I don't know why their forms require you to log in, but whatever account you use to log into the Pokemon TCGO, you need to lo you need to log in on there to see. All right, so let's go ahead and start with Battle Compressor here and get a feel for what's in our deck. So all the Ho-Ohs are here. Actually, might just been three Ho-Ohs since we can like discard a Fairy Energy to the Sycamore. I think I'm going to do that, actually. My opponent's got a bunch of EXs out already, so Salamance and Jolteon and Keldior are probably what we're getting with that one. 
So let's go ahead and Hoopa. Yep, we're gonna go get Keldeo, Jolteon, Salamance. We'll play this out. We'll play this out. We'll play this out. We'll go ahead and we'll Skyfield. I'm Sycamoring before playing an energy on purpose here, because if we run good, we can knock this Lugia out this turn. Um, hmm, what am I doing here? So, I think we're starting by seeing if we get any of these into play before we make decisions. We did. Okay, so now... Now I need to find a energy switch plus a DDE. There's an energy switch. Now I just need to find a double color synergy, which I have this computer search to do. Go ahead and energy switch and grab this guy and put it on here. And then I can use this computer search to find a DDE, discard these two. Feels a little bit bad discarding a sky bench here. Grab this. I'm going to go ahead and put Xeranus on my bench. I'm going to go ahead and put this here. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six different types of Pokemon. So we'll hit for a clean 200 with this. Yeah. Grab my prizes. Oh, look, a Coralus. That sounds delicious. This is why being on the draw with this deck is hilarious on occasion. Just like, all right, turn one, hit you for 200, go. Good old consistency. All right, and they knocked our Sky Bench off, which kind of why we felt bad discarding the other one, because that was likely to happen. We don't feel too bad discarding the Ho-Oh, but like, now we need to get another Sky Field in order to one-shot things, which isn't stellar. Hopefully they have some more bench Pokemon to play out here so this Coralus does work. Nope. The old stormy seas do nothing. Um, yeah, I'm just going to Coralist to start here. Shuffle my hand and draw seven. We're real lucky we'll find the last sky bench. We are not. That's unfortunate. Um, we're just like hitting for a cool 170 here. That's so awkward. Let's go ahead and power this up. It's possible I should be powering this up, honestly. Thorns just conceding. All right, sure. Probably losing the game anyway. Alright, we had a lot of good games with this. Do we want to donk, donk some idiots? 